what is going on guys my name is Mehul and welcome to your third required JS tutorial in which we'll be covering about the require keyword well I said that I would cover the configuration file in this tutorial but I guess I missed this one so yeah so before doing the configuration file let's just quickly hop over to what this require keyword is so as I told you that data main accepts the configuration file of your application and for now it is just the config.js which is a blank file and yeah so after this script loads itself that is this require 2122 then it would load this one and since they are in the same path so I don't need to just add JS or something like that and the next thing I'm doing is I'm using the require again so what require does is it would load a file as just like you are adding a file as a script SRC so this technically means that this bunch of code here means that we are doing something like this only but you'll say that hey we already did that in this line so what is the use of this code right here so I'll just show you that in a minute so right here what I told you is that this script file would load itself first and then this config.js right here which does not require a .js extension so you can just make use of this as config and not config.js so what happens here is that this is a asynchronous call so when this require 2122 loads this asynchronously calls this config file so that means that it doesn't restrict your JavaScript code below this script tag from running so for example let's let me just show you a quick example so that it's more clear to you just add a script and an alert and let's just open the inspect element and reload now pay attention to here this alert just stops the execution of this page unless I click on this OK button so here we can easily see that for now just 3.html and require 2.1.2.2 is loaded and there is no config.js file loaded yet so when I click on OK you can see the config is loaded now so if I want like if I want to have some method from or some variable from this config file and I try to use it just after this file then it won't work because this is as I told you is asynchronously loading this file so the code below this script might or might not run at times so you you might not take any chances now what about that with this if I write alert in here and then I reload then as you can see this config.js is already present so if I can show both of these together alert before require keyword and alert after require keyword and if I reload this now as you can see the before require keyword fires before the config.js file is loaded and this after require keyword is immediately fired after this config.js is loaded so this is kind of a callback function you can say which would be fired when this file is loaded and don't worry about duplicates require js would automatically handle and know whether your file has been loaded once or twice and it will decide accordingly so even if i remove this code you can see that require js would still load the config file right here because of this data main attribute and if I kind of remove this as well then also require.js should load the config file as you can see now this config file right here is loaded because of the JavaScript code this one and the previous one was loaded off data main code so you yes you need this data main attribute if you want your config file to be a configuration file and we'll be looking at how to program a configuration file in require.js in the next tutorial so so that's it for this tutorial and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching